Welcome everyone. I'm Nashwa Abdosalam with Heart Rhythm TV and we're here to talk about Bi Libra late breaking trial. I'm joined by Dr. Katsifa and Dr. Poole. Welcome. Thank you, Nashwa. Thank you. So um, the Bi Libra study looked at ventricular arrhythmias and mortality in patients with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy in patients with ICD and CRT with a focus on sex difference. Uh, the initial results were presented at HRS 2022 and the one-year follow-up at HRS 2023. Today, we're excited to hear the three-year follow-up results. So um, can you give us a quick summary on the study and the main findings? Absolutely. Uh, we reported in BioLibra in 1,000 patients with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy and 48% enrollment of females that there is a high residual risk of a three-year rate of 14% VT or VF, so about 5% VT or VF per year, and a 12% uh, risk of mortality, so that's about um, 4% uh, per year. We also found some sex-specific differences. Females were shown to have a lower risk of VT or VF events. And we also showed a lower rate of mortality in females. However, this was not a persistent when we adjusted in the multivariate model. So it seems that following adjustment for clinical variables, females and males have similar risk of mortality. Um, did you have any unexpected findings in the study? Well, we didn't show the um, Kaplan-Meier curves, but we did look at interactions between sex and device and also by race. And what we found was that women with a CRTD had the lowest VTVF or mortality rates. Nonetheless, it was still 10% at three years. So you can calculate that. That is still a risk of about 3% per year or per higher. So it's um, substantial despite the use of high rates of triple medical heart failure therapy. It was a little bit before wide use of SGLT2 inhibitors, but patients were really on very good heart failure medical therapy. The second interaction was by race. And here we find another interesting finding, which is that white females, white women do the very best. And black females had a much higher three-year event rate that was similar to black males and also to white males. So that's a really interesting patient group that we'll have to look into a little bit further. Um, thank you for that update. And you enrolled 48% women. I really want to congratulate you on that. And I just want to know how you were able to do that. Yes, we actually had uh, a really complex female-centric uh, effort that went into this, and I think Borstin and I will come in. Uh, of course, female trial leadership and involving female investigators at each site was one of those components. And we also developed uh, female-specific recruitment materials as well. Jeannie? Yeah, this has been a um, real labor of love for Valentin and I. We've talked about trying to do a trial like this for a very long time. And I, I feel very proud, as does she and the rest of the whole BioLibra team, that we were able to exceed our target. And I think that it should stand as a model for future trials that you really can enroll females into clinical trials. You just have to put some effort into it, sometimes some extra effort. And also, it's very important that we have visibility for women in research clinical trials playing a role as co-PIs, PIs of the study, or being PIs of the sites. All of this, I think, sends a message to women who want to participate in clinical trials. Well, thank you, Dr. Katifa and Dr. Poole for this wonderful update. And for all our viewers, stay tuned for more HRS 2025 coverage.